10 Creepy Unsolved Mysteries from Japan That'll Keep You Up at Night. Unsolved mysteries from Japan are surprisingly rare. Though the reality behind the number is a point of contention, Japan does boast a 99% conviction rate. Violent crimes are rare. The murder rate is under 1 per 100,000, less than a quarter of the rate in the US. For this reason, these bizarre Japanese crimes are all the more striking. These murders, disappearances, and other unsolved mysteries are the strangest, and most interesting to come from the land of the rising sun. This is Japan-level weirdness. Many of these mysteries have gone unsolved for decades. Some will probably never be solved. In Japan, tales of people being spirited away have existed for centuries. These stories are just accepted. People would walk off to the mountains and be swallowed up by the spirit world. While police are looking for more corporeal causes, what did happen to these people? Who was really responsible? Whatever the case, these are accounts of the facts. This is what we do know about these unsolved mysteries. It is up to you to fill in the blanks. 1. The Setogayu Family Massacre, No Killer Identified, Despite DNA Evidence One of the ways I know that the year has gone by quickly, and it's December 30th already is the annual pilgrimage of police officers, to the scene of the Setogayu family murders. There are very few crimes in Japan but, as I have said before in this blog, when they do happen, they tend to be bizarre. And the Setogaya murders were just that. Police officers on Sunday paid their respects outside a home in Tokyo's Setogaya ward, where a family of four was murdered 12 years ago. Police also handed out flyers appealing for information, at nearby Sijagaku and Mi train station, in the hope that someone will come forward with new information. Mikio Miyazawa, 44, his 41-year-old wife Yasuko, 8-year-old daughter Nina, and 6-year-old son Ray, were found dead on the morning of December 31, 2000. Miyazawa's son had been strangled, and the other three had been stabbed to death. Fingerprints and other evidence in the home indicate the killer used the computer, and ate ice cream after the attack on December 30, spending up to 11 hours before leaving the next morning. Approximately 190,000 officers have been involved in the case to date, and police have received more than 16,000 pieces of information from the public, yet the killer remains at large. 50 police officers are still assigned to the case to follow up on any leads. The reward was raised from the initial 3 million yen to 10 million yen, for information which leads to the killer or killer's arrest. Despite extensive detective work focusing on the killer's clothing, accessories, weapons, and other circumstantial evidence such, as the sand found on the clothing that the killer abandoned at the scene, police have not identified any suspects years after the murder. Following the murders, police deduced that the clothes, and knife left at the scene had been bought in Kanagawa Prefecture. Three kinds of powered fluorescent dye were found on the trainers, and bag left at the scene. In the pocket of the sweater which had only gone on sale two months before the killings took place, were found traces of bird dropping, Japanese Zelkova tree and willow leaves. DNA analysis has revealed that traces of blood found at the scene, not belonging to the family suggests, that the killer has a mother of European descent, possibly from a country near the Mediterranean or Adriatic Sea. Analysis of the Y chromosome has revealed that the killer's father is of Asian descent, with the DNA appearing in 1 in 4 or 5 Koreans, 1 in 10 Chinese, and 1 in 13 Japanese. The Setogaya murders show two things, Japanese CSI is apparently the best in the world. I have heard that they give training to American CSI teams. Japan itself is a rather OCD nation and everything has to be done properly down to the smallest detail. In the past I have been told off by government officials and at the bank for not making sure that my hanko, my official seal, used in this country instead of signatures, is 100% upright and totally in the little circular box. Sometimes they have even taken my seal from me and restamped it next to my shoddy original. A wonky seal is sometimes a way of expressing displeasure or just a wrong attitude. Anyway, Japan is a pernickety country, which on the whole I like and Japan's CSI team have certainly extracted all the evidence in this case. However, 
The Japanese police in this country are not considered the cleverest or most efficient or most pleasant of people. As as foreigner, I have experienced this myself although I would also point out that several of my ex-students have become police and they are very nice guys, especially the one who, on graduation day, came up to me and said, Sensei, in the future, if you have any problems with the police at all, just let me know and the problem will go away. His father and his grandfather are also cops and I think they have the neighborhood sewn up. So I'm alright. But I think the real problem with the J-Stone cops, as foreigners tend to call them, is that they just don't have the resources to solve major crimes, for one very good reason, they just don't get the experience. Other than peeping toms and bicycle thefts, there's just not that much crime about. And you can't set up a national DNA database for bicycle thieves. When I teach the crime class of my British culture course, I always ask the students what they do to protect themselves against crime. One student said he never locked the front door of his family's house when he went out. Why on earth not? I asked. It doesn't have a lock he replied. This is still common in rural areas. 2. The Yanaguni Ancient Underwater Pyramid of Mystery On the southern coast of Yanaguni, Japan, lie submerged ruins estimated to be around 10,000 years old. The origin of the site is hotly debated, many experts argue that it is man-made, while more conservative scientists insist it was carved by natural phenomena. The unique and awe-inspiring site was discovered in 1995, by a diver who strayed too far off the Okinawa shore and was dumbstruck when he stumbled upon the sunken arrangement of monolithic blocks, as if terraced into the side of a mountain. The structure sparked instant controversy and attracted crowds of diving archaeologists, media and curious hobbyists, none of whom were able to ascertain its identity. Late in the following year, more serious attempts were made to gather data, and map out the structure. The process revealed many surprising findings including what appears to be a massive arch, or gateway of huge stone blocks which appeared to fit together perfectly, right-angled joins, carvings and what appeared to be stairways, paved streets and crossroads and grand staircases leading to plazas surrounded by pairs of towering features resembling pylons. As teams of expert divers fanned out from the south coast of Okinawa using grid search patterns, they found five subsurface archaeological sites near three offshore islands. The locations vary at depths from 100 to only 20 feet. Proponents of the view that the sites are man-made point out features such as two round holes, about two feet wide, and a straight row of smaller holes that appear to have been an attempt to split off a section of the rock by means of wedges, as in ancient quarries. Professor Masaaki Kimura, a marine seismologist of the University of the Rikius, also pointed out a number of marks such as a plus sign and a V-shape, that appear to show that human beings worked the stone and could have been made by wedge-like tools called kuzabi. While many of the features seen at Yanaguni are also seen, in natural sandstone formations throughout the world, the concentration of so many peculiar formations, and 90-degree angles in such a small area seems peculiar. Natural Formations Despite the unusual features displayed at Yanaguni, there remains a small group of scientists who have studied the formation and who are adamant that the large blocks formed naturally as a result of tectonic movement, and other natural phenomena. Geologist Robert Schock of Boston University is one scientist who believes that the structures were naturally formed by acknowledges that, they may have been used or modified by humans in the past. He points to the fact that the site lies in an earthquake-prone region and that earthquakes tend to fracture rocks in a regular manner. This is also the view of John Anthony West who believes that the so-called walls are simply natural horizontal platforms which fell into a vertical position when rock below them eroded, and the alleged roads are simply channels in the rock. Other examples of natural formations with flat faces and sharp, straight edges are the basalt columns of the Giant's Causeway, and the natural staircase formation on Old Rag Mountain. Remnants of an ancient civilization? Nevertheless, many scientists are persisting in their search for further evidence of their man made nature with the belief that the stone structures are the remnants of an old city that must have existed around 10,000 years ago, 
when the sea level was much lower than it is today. Since, it does not appear that the site fell into the sea. One proponent of this view is explorer, and researcher Graham Hancock who in his book titled Underworld writes, it was the submerged structures of Japan that first awakened me to the possibility that an underworld in history, unrecognized by archaeologists, could lie concealed and forgotten beneath the sea, Hancock 2002. Hancock draws parallels between Yanaguni, and other ruins found beneath the waters of Lake Titicaca and Ndwarka, off the coast of India, which offer further evidence for the existence of a vast underwater world containing structures stretching back to the dimmest chapters of human antiquity. If the structures at Yanaguni are indeed the remains of an ancient city, one possibility is the prehistoric inhabitants of Japan called the Jamin, who existed from about 12,000 BC to around 300 BC and who developed a sophisticated culture. The Jamin is often compared to pre-Columbian cultures of Pacific Northwest North America because in both regions cultural complexity developed within a primarily hunting-gathering context. Although their society was considered primitive by the standards of later times, they were the first culture on Earth to develop pottery, according to mainstream theorists. Examples of this technology date back to the time when many of the submerged structures of Yanaguni would have been above water and if they were in fact built by human hands, this would have been the time that their construction was underway. 3. Pregnant woman in Nagoya murdered, her unborn baby cut from her stomach. Japan is a relatively peaceful society as modesty, politeness, and compliance are highly valued traits throughout the generations. However, when a crime is committed, particularly murder, tensions rise due to the heinous nature and actions brought about by hatred and jealousy. One such case of deliberate cruelty is the Nagoya pregnant tripper case, which remains unsolved to this day. A 27-year-old heavily pregnant woman was caught off guard in her home, when an intruder broke in through the front door. After a short struggle, the intruder wrapped an electric cord around the woman's neck, suffocating her. The intruder cut a vertical 38-centimeter slit in the belly of the victim before removing a live baby and cutting the umbilical cord. The intruder quickly fled after removing cash from the woman's purse. Hours later, the husband returned home to find the corpse of his wife, and a conscious baby. When using a towel to wipe the residue from his baby's body, the husband realized something had been crammed into the cavity of the woman's stomach. A quick check revealed the intruder had forced a phone and car keys into the hole where the baby had been. Points of interest the police originally suspected the husband due to a number of reasons. His wife was 13 days past the birth due date, but the husband ignored calls from her throughout the day. Upon arriving back to the apartment, the husband didn't alert the authorities when he discovered the door was open. Before checking on his wife, the husband changed from his work suit into casual clothing, despite being past the baby's due date. When commemorating his wife's death, the husband poured a glass of wine and announced dramatically, let us pour wine, as my wife liked it. Observers stated his actions caused discomfort as they were similar to a professional actor, meaning he could fake the mourning of his wife. All suspicions and allegations were dropped as the husband had a strong alibi of working at the time of his wife's death. Other important facts taken into account, the husband and wife were part of Anway an MLM company known for its aggressive selling tactics, a concept frowned upon in Japanese culture. A short male and salary man clothing had visited neighbors earlier in the day to ask if the husband was home, one housewife complained of the man being creepy. Due to the baby's survival, the intruder would have had to slice the woman's abdomen and remove the child within minutes of her death, people have speculated. A. The intruder may have been a psychopath or had no remorse as the slit was cleanly cut only minutes after committing murder b. The intruder may have been in the medical field due to having knowledge about surgical procedures and human anatomy c. The intruder may have been a high school student due to evidence in regards to shoe size the murder was similar to another incident 28 years before when several high school girls were murdered before having their stomachs slit open and underwear crammed inside although the investigation was extensive, the intruder was never found. 4. The Inakashira Park Dismemberment, Body Parts Found in a Bag 
Today we'll be talking about one of Japan's many incidents of Barabara Satsujin, scattered murder, a method of killing so seemingly popular in the country, that it has its very own page on the Japanese Wikipedia. On April 23, 1994, a cleaning staff member of Tokyo's Nakashira Park found a garbage bag in the park's trash can. She thought the bag contained raw fish, but when her colleagues opened it to see what was inside, they found a human ankle. The police were called in, and the bag was found to contain a total of 24 pieces of human flesh, including two feet, two hands, and a shoulder. At an autopsy conducted at Trin University Hospital, the cause of death was deemed unknown. The parts had been completely drained of blood, and to make the case even weirder, each piece was cut exactly to the length of 20 centimeters, about 7.8 inches. Although a third of the body was never found, including the head, the pieces were identified three days later as belonging to a 35-year-old architect named Seiichi Kawamura. Kawamura lived less than a mile from the park, and was last seen on April 21. He ate dinner with his family that evening, and afterward went out to karaoke with an old co-worker. He left his friend around 11 p.m., but never returned home. His family reported him missing the next day. Despite police questioning some 37,000 people, the case has never been solved. There were reports of two suspicious men walking in the park, and carrying a plastic bag around 4 a.m. on the day Kawamori's body was discovered, but they have never been identified. Other witnesses said, that they heard the sound of a car colliding with something, in the very early hours of the 22nd. It's been suggested that Kawamura was struck by a car, and that his killers cut him up to get rid of the body. One popular rumor even claimed that Kawamura had been a member of a religious cult, and was brutally murdered after trying to leave it. Whether the murder was the attempt to hide a tragic accident, or the work of a deranged surgeon, perhaps we'll never know. Prior to 2010, Japan had a statue of limitations on murder for 15 years. Unfortunately, the case missed the country's abolition of the limitation by only a year. The case has never been solved. 5. Junior high students find a body in a futon bag, authorities still don't know who did it. On April 21, 1996, while coming home from school, a group of junior high school students were looking through a bamboo grove in the Haga district of Tochigi Prefecture, when they noticed a barely closed futon bag. The kids had seen the bag laying there for almost a month, and curious about what might be inside, one of them poked it with a stick. A human hand then drooped out. The bag, it turned out, contained the body of a middle-aged man. According to the autopsy, the man had been dead about a month when his body was discovered. He was bruised on his waist, and some of his front teeth were missing. He appeared to be between the ages of 40 and 50. The man was about 5 foot 11, and weighed 150 pounds. He had an O blood type. His clothes consisted of a dark blue jacket, a gray shirt with a green tie, and a gray pair of pants. Investigators found the surname Yamamoto written, on the bottom side of the tag of his pants, and the Japanese word for next on the other side. Despite these mysterious messages, the man has never been identified. In 2010, a sign was put up on the spot where the unidentified man's body was found. Police hope that it might someday lead to his identification. 6. The Disappearance of Yukio Nishi, A Girl Vanishes Into Thin Air Greenery Day, a national holiday in Japan meant to appreciate nature, is observed every May 4. From its establishment in 1989 until 2007, however, it was celebrated every April 29. In 2005, as part of a Greenery Day celebration, a bamboo shoot digging event was held in Kanagawa Prefecture's Gashikadai Forest. Yes, this is a thing. Many people in Asia like boiling and eating the shoots. Some 60 people showed up to participate, including 5-year-old Yuki Onishi and her mother and 8-year-old sister. The event started at 1 p.m and Yuki jumped with joy when she found her first shoot about a half hour later. She told her mother that she was going to find another one, and then walked away to continue her search. 
20 minutes after Yuki ran off, her mother looked at where all the other diggers were, and suddenly realized that her daughter was missing. After a search by themselves turned up nothing, Yuki's family called the police at 3 p.m. When the police still couldn't find a single trace of the girl, firefighters were brought in to assist the search at 5 p.m. Although the authorities combed the area for the next six hours, they still weren't able to find anything, not even a shoe or the hat Yuki was wearing. Eventually, over 3,000 people assisted in the case, but not a single one of them was able to find any clues. The forest where Yuki disappeared and the nearby pond seemed to turn up nothing. When a police dog was brought in to follow Yuki's scent, it suddenly stopped in its tracks in the middle of the forest. Four other dogs were made to follow the scent the next day, but they led police to the same exact spot. This is probably the most troubling part of the case. How could somebody seemingly just vanish into thin air? A few internet sleuths have suggested that, Yuki was carried off by an eagle or some other large bird. I'm sure we've all heard stories about eagles swooping down on a baby or toddler and grabbing them, but those are really just tall tales. According to biologist Ron Clark, the most an eagle can carry without any difficulty is 4 or 5 pounds. At 34 pounds, Yuki would have been way too heavy for an eagle's carrying capacity. The other, and I'd say more plausible, theory is that Yuki was lured away and snatched up by somebody who was just passing through the forest. While nobody particularly suspicious was noticed by the diggers, some of them did see a man walking through the area with a backpack large enough to hold a child of Yuki's size. This man has never been identified, although he might have been a camper or hiker. At the time of her disappearance, Yuki Onishi weighed 34 pounds, 15.5 kilograms, and stood at 3 feet, 5 inches, 106 centimeters. She was wearing a pink hat, a long-sleeved shirt with a red and orange pattern, white gloves, long blue pants, and pink shoes. She was five years old, and as of the time of this writing, would now be 1516. A website set up for Yuki, which Japanese speakers can access here, offers a printable flyer and contact information for anybody who might be able to help. 7. The Cyanide Poison Dulong Tea Murder A case of poisoning that has hit the quiet, rural communities of Nagano Prefecture may have been the act of a person familiar with the operation of the local supermarket where cyanide-laced cans of oolong tea were placed, police officials said Friday. Nagano Prefectural Police said Friday, that they have mobilized 130 police officers to investigate the case of a 58-year-old resident in Abbas who died Monday shortly, after drinking a cyanide-tainted can of oolong tea he bought at Sun, a supermarket in the nearby city of Suzaka. The victim, Ikijiro Nakazawa, was originally believed to have died of cardiac arrest. But after hearing reports of poisoned tea found Tuesday at Sun, Nakazawa's family found that the can he drank from had also been tampered with. There was a small hole at the bottom of the can which was sealed with a transparent adhesive, and police discovered a cyanide compound from the tea that remained in the can. Nakazawa is believed to have bought the poison drink around noon Sunday. On Tuesday, the owner of the supermarket reported to police, that he spat out some bitter-tasting oolong tea from a can that was on his store shelves. Police discovered a lethal dose of cyanide in the can, which had been tampered with. Officials said there was enough cyanide in the drink to be fatal. Local police now believe that the two poisoned cans were placed on the supermarket shelves, by the same person, the first one on Sunday and the second one on Tuesday. Sun is open from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. and normally receives about 2,000 to 2,500 customers over the weekend. The shop was also crowded on Tuesday because it had a 5% discount sale. There are no security cameras in the store, and only three shopkeepers patrol the store once every few hours, the police officials said. Local police are searching for anyone who may have seen someone suspicious in or around the supermarket. Police are also trying to determine if the store was in any kind of trouble. 8. The eerie murder of two-year-old Maki Katsuchi Yama. On November 21, 1984, around 2.10 p.m., 
A two-year-old girl named Maki Kotsucha Yama was found fallen, on her face in a drainage ditch in an alley behind her home in Higashi Osaka City. Makiko was unconscious, and her neck seemed as though it had been strangled with a cord. Although she was rushed to the hospital, Makiko died nine hours after being taken there. The fact that Makiko had been playing outside by herself wasn't unusual in the neighborhood, since other children and mothers were often outside too. Nobody, however, had seen Makiko's murderer. Eerily, Makiko had been found unconscious on the same spot a month earlier. She had been strangled that time too, with the marks of a string around her neck. Unlike the second time, she had regained consciousness shortly after being taken to the hospital. Immediately after this first incident, Makiko's grandfather received a strange phone call from an unidentified woman. The woman was crying hard and speaking incomprehensibly. He tried talking to her for two minutes, before she suddenly said I'm sorry and hung up. Makiko's grandfather had not yet heard about Makiko's incident, and thought the woman had gotten the wrong number. For the next few days, he received several more unexplained phone calls. Every time he answered, he heard only silence on the other end. Police originally thought the first incident was an accident. They concluded that Makiko had gotten her neck hooked around a vinyl, strap that had been attached to the door of her house. After Makiko died, however, they decided to launch a criminal investigation. It was strange that Makiko had been found in the alley, since she had refused to go anywhere near it since the first incident. Since there were no scratches on her face, it was suspected that somebody lured Makiko away, and then strangled her in a different location. In the 30 years since Makiko's death, neither her killer, or the mysterious woman who called her grandfather have been identified. 9. The Murder of Yoko Yoshida On September 29, 2000, around 1 p.m., a census taker collecting information in a Tokyo apartment complained to management about a room that had a terrible smell coming from it. When management sent a janitor to check the room out, he found that the door was unlocked. Inside, he found the body of the woman who was living there, a 28-year-old manga artist named Yoko Yoshida. Yoshida, who lived alone, was laying on her back on her bed, wearing only a t-shirt. As the autopsy determined, Yoshida had been strangled to death. She had been dead for at least 10 days by the time her body was discovered. Her room showed no signs of disarray and nothing appeared to have been taken. 3 million yen and a receipt from a convenience store dated September 18 were found in her purse and wallet. Police suspect that Yoshida had known her killer, and since she was a manga artist, some suggest that she was killed by a crazed fan. Yoshida had been active in the doujinshi, self-publishing, community since she graduated high school. Her killer might very well have been somebody she knew, but police have never been able to find any shady acquaintances or witnesses. 10. The Murder of the Mezawas On the morning of December 31, 2000, a relative of the Miyazawa family in Tokyo's Setogaya ward found Father Mikio, his wife Yasuko, their daughter Nina, and their son Ray dead in their home. While Ray had been strangled in his bedroom, the other three members of the family had been stabbed, to death in two different parts of the house. Authorities speculate that the killer had gotten into the home, from a bathroom window on the second floor of the house around 11.30 p.m. He went into Ray's room and strangled him as he slept. Mikio was found on the first floor near the staircase, possibly coming up the stairs after he heard the intruder making noise. The female Mezawas were killed next. The killer then ransacked the family's house, and stayed there for about 10 hours. He went into the kitchen and took some food from the fridge, and then used the family's computer for a while. None of the money in the house was taken, but some New Year's cards were missing. A knife the killer left behind was found, along with a shirt and bag. Additionally, blood was found at the scene that didn't belong to any of the Mezawas. After more than 15 years, Police have had few clues to catch the Mezawa's killer. There is currently a reward of 20 million yen being offered to anybody who could give information that would lead to the killer's identification.